I'm sorry, but you know that technology does not always works the way it's supposed to work. But what matters is that we are back. And our guest today is uh, James Nolan. James is, is a man that does not need any introduction. You all know the man for a while, for a few years. And, but he's now trying to change, to fix, to correct, to serve you. Because he tells me this is all about you. It's all about the people of Yonkers. James, thank you for sitting here with us. James, tell us what is the big difference between you and your opponent. If I'm trying to decide mm -hmm. who should I vote for, what is the big difference? Well, thank you for having me today. Uh, it's a pleasure as always. Uh, but the big difference is uh, before I got into politics, I was already in the community. I was serving the community. I was in the community. I was working every day, especially during COVID. I was serving my community, and I'm going to be just as active when I am elected as the next county legislator. But what is the big difference? I see you all around mm -hmm. all the time. I haven't seen the person who's running or opposes you. Mm -hmm. People at this time are starting to make up their mind. Why should I vote for A instead of voting for B? Mm -hmm. What should I vote for you? What, what, better, better yet, let me put it, what drives you drives to me run? To uh, just make a difference. I, you know, unfortunately, with my brother being killed, I don't want that to happen to anybody. And I've seen that this community has been left voiceless for a long time. And that's uh, something I can't agree with. You know, we need a voice in District 15, Yonkers, Bronxville, all of Westchester, now in New York, too. We deserve a voice. I want to be that voice. I want to do what I have to do. It's always going to be about the people instead of the politics. I want to be known as a public servant that did the, did the job and above and beyond. Well, James, you are already serving the public. You are already doing things. We know mm -hmm. a couple about the a legislation that yeah. passed. But now, since you brought up your brother Michael, yes. let's talk also about the very serious problem that is happening in Yonkers. Okay. Actually, it's happened all over the United States. But we are in Yonkers, so we're going to relate this to Yonkers. Mm -hmm. Violence. Okay, not just gun violence, but also stabbing and violence in general. How serious is this to you? Oh, it's very serious. You know, crime has gone up drastically, uh, but some of it's not reported because uh, some of the laws that are in place in Albany, they're making it very hard for the police and for judges and DAs to actually prosecute these people, hold them accountable. Many of these people, you know, they, they come out of jail or they don't get arrested and then they end up doing more harm. For example, last year alone, there was a 17-year-old in Yonkers who was arrested four times, three times for carrying a legal gun, one time for shooting at somebody, luckily didn't hit nobody, and family court let him out. These are things that are, cannot be tolerated. You know, my brother's unfortunate situation, uh, in Maryland, back on Lake Avenue, she was killed by a 15-year-old walking around with a gun that had a rap sheet. But these laws, we need to advocate against and get stricter. If you want to carry an illegal weapon, such as a gun or a knife, and you want to hurt somebody, you need to be taught that this can't happen anymore. Not only for their safety, but for you to actually learn and grow up the right way and have a second chance. Now, I need to make it clear, I have spoken to you many times in the past. I have spoken to members of your family, and they always make it very clear to me that they don't oppose guns, lawful owned guns. Your beef, it's about illegal guns on the hands of criminals. Yes, correct? illegal guns. Illegal guns kill 100 people a day in this country. So every day, we, statistically, we have a mass murder. But it's something that is not really talked about. You know, they barely mention it. But when it's, you know, it's a, a legal gun, and it's unfortunate that someone with mental illness uses it in a bad capacity, then it's brought up. But this is something that's happening every day. Illegal guns are a huge problem and it needs to be addressed, it needs to be addressed. If someone is arrested for carrying a legal gun, they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. They shouldn't be let out where they're gonna do more harm. It, because what if it's their family member? You know, think about it. I, I am fully against anybody carrying an illegal firearm. I am for someone that wants to be responsible for, with a gun, the Second Amendment. And I ask the perfect question all the time. When was the last time you seen an NRA member on the south side of Yonkers shooting? You don't. It's an illegal gun, and this is a serious problem. Now, James, I have spoken to politicians mm -hmm. and spoken to them about 
bail reform. Yeah. Okay. And uh, say, look, uh, bail reform, that is a problem. And the answer is, well, it's really not the way you think it is. If somebody does a violent crime, that person is not released. I said, okay, now tell me, if somebody is carrying a gun, but did not use the weapon yet, but yeah. is found with the gun, what do you think the intention were to have that loaded gun exactly. in their backpack? What do you think they were going to use for? What, what do you think about that, James? Listen, uh, the moment you pick up a firearm, an illegal firearm, or a knife, you know what you're going to do with it. You're not just doing it to show and tell. You're, you're looking to use it. You're looking to cause harm to somebody. And that's, you know what, if you're caught with it, you need to be reprimanded. You need to be prosecuted. You know, when we were growing up as kids, if we're done doing something bad, our parents punish us to teach us the right way. These are things that have to happen. And on the county level, we can advocate and pass resolutions to address the bail reform because there are a number of areas that are heavily being affected by this. And if you fully request the information from every individual city from two years ago till now, you will see the number of uh, crimes going up. So you think that the bail reform needs reform? Yes. It shouldn't be just left up to the judge. For a lot of judges, uh, they leave it up to their discretion. So one judge could fully prosecute, do what everything they have to do to punish this person, to teach them the right way, rehabilitate them. But then there is all the people, like there are judges that let them go. Oh, they need a second chance, they had this, they had that. No, it should be in black and white. If you're caught with this, if you do this, you gotta do X amount of time, that's it. Now guys, just before we go further, let me tell you about the place where we are sitting doing this interview. Lusitania Restaurant, 15 Lockwood Avenue in Yonkers, New York. This is the place for the best buffet, not just in Yonkers, not just Westchester County, lower Westchester County. I'm going to say the entire county, and I would go as far as the entire state. Come on down here every Friday, 7 to 10, or come for a regular dinner, a regular, a regular meal, any day of the week. Come and check it out. So what about property taxes, uh, James? How you see this issue, and what's your position? Well, property taxes is an issue. We have some of the highest in the county and all of New York State and possibly the country. This is a real issue. Uh, property taxes are going to keep going up, especially because Indian Point was being shut down last year. Not only did thousands of jobs get cut from union members, uh, property taxes are going to go up because a lot of those areas of the LA Crowen and Peekskill had provided uh, funding to them. So that means now with the funding being cut, for the school this is a fire department, we got to make up for somewhere. And what's going to happen? They're going to propose to hit the taxpayer in the pocket. So you know what? I, I've gone around Bronxville many times. There is, on average, people paying sixty to seventy thousand dollars in Bronxville on property taxes. Yonkers is around thirteen, maybe fifteen thousand. It's going to go up. This is we cannot no longer hit people in the pockets to get us out of these situations. You know, especially coming out of a pandemic. You know, last year was hard enough. This year. You know, last year they didn't raise property taxes. The year before they went up 6%. This is an issue. What about sales taxes? Sales tax is gonna, it's gone up recently. And you know, the business are not getting the, the funding back. You know, they, they're providing more and they're not getting as much as they should. You know, it's being taken from them. You know, another big problem that I see in Yonkers, and, and I, I need to know your stance on it because this problem, it's affecting not just Yonkers, but mm -hmm. it affects Bronxville to a certain point and other places in, you know, in Lower Westchester, the homeless. Yes. Businesses are being seriously affected by it. Yes. Crime is on the way up. And also, not every homeless mm -hmm. don't have a job. Some do, but they have yeah. a problem affording. Affordability. Exactly. How you see the homeless issue and how would you address it, James? Well, the homeless issue is a serious problem. Right now, county has a, a solution that they take every homeless person every single day and put them up in a hotel. It's $100 per day that we spend on a homeless person, and at the end of the month, it's $4,000, about 4000 in taxpayer money. We should take that money and create a program to rehabilitate these people to get them back on their feet, bring them into a program, we provide them shelter, food, 
they have counselors on site, we can get them jobs, they had to do progress reports, they gotta be in a certain time, they can't have guests over, but we're gonna transition them and help them get back on their feet. Especially because it's a mental health crisis, some of them have. You know, some people are just down on their luck. And we should be helping these people get back on their feet. We shouldn't be coddling them. We shouldn't just put them up in hotel rooms. We should be helping them. Now, James, Yonkers is moving forward. Yonkers is changing. You are a young man. You probably yeah. don't remember those things. But years ago, 20, 30 years ago, Yonkers was a mess. Mm -hmm. okay? you, you drove around South Broadway. It's a whole bu you know, bunch of burned buildings. The riverfront did not exist. Now, you go around Yonkers, you see a hell of a difference. Oh, huge. Okay? Huge difference, and for the best. But on the other side of the coin, people from Yonkers, many people from Yonkers are uh, you know, forced to leave the city of Yonkers because they cannot afford to live in Yonkers yeah. any longer. Is this a problem to you? And how would you address that if you are elected? It is a problem. You know, affordability is a huge issue, especially in any part of New York right now. New York is becoming way too expensive. You know, if you compare us to Florida, Florida has a bigger population than we do. Their balance, their budget is balanced, but you know, everybody's going down to Florida now. You know, we need to stop making it so expensive and driving people out of here and keep them here. We need to make it more affordable. We cannot have income tax checks, you know, income tax, uh, you know, that is applied to our wages and things like that. Like, we cannot, what's next? We're gonna apply tax to breathing air or drinking more water than we are right now? Like, these are things that we have to address. We gotta keep it here. We gotta find solutions for this instead of just making it way too expensive. I see that if you are elected, you are thinking about creating an inspector general position. Yeah. Tell us about that. That might be of importance to many people who are watching us. Well, I do feel that there should be an independent person that is looking over all finances, deals, uh, budgets, auditing things, you know, into municipalities. Where can we save money? These are things that we need a watchdog for. And with that, we'll request information to certain areas, like why is this operating this way? Why are you constantly, you know, in a problem? We need a watchdog looking over our funds, our taxpayer money. Our taxpayers are constantly questioning, where is my money going? Where am I providing? What's happening to our dollar now? And these are some, this is something that we have to address. So I feel that we should have an independent person that's non-political, appointed to the position, and to, this is their job. All the financial deals, development deals, any, you know, municipalities get audited. These are things that can help us in the long run to, you know, reduce taxes being raised and bills going up. James, I'm always around talking to people, asking their opinions about Yonkers politicians, programs, what do they think that we need in Yonkers that would make our city a better place. And I see you out there often talking to mm -hmm. people. When they speak with you, what is their biggest concern? Well, safety is always one of the biggest concerns that they bring up. Safety, affordability, you know, where are their kids going to grow up? What are, they, what are their kids going to be able to, to have to do? These are things that are constantly brought up. You know, they, they want to know why. Why? Why are things like this? And what can we do? You know, they're, they're tired of the same political talk. They, everybody, you know, during the candidacy time, they go around, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And not many people address it. You know, these are things that, they're problems. These are problems that people want solutions for. We should provide them. Well, people of Yonkers are tired of uh, words. Now we need yeah. actions to the words. Now, you go to Bronxville often as yeah. well. I, I hear that you have a great support from you know, the people of Bronxville. Yeah. When you speak with them, do they have a specific issue that uh, they want to be addressed? Or the issues in Bronxville are more or less the same issues as in Yonkers? Yeah. They vary. You know, the property taxes, of course, once again, that's an issue that's brought up over there multiple times because a lot of their money is provided to the school district. Um, but then they, you have the people that are retired now and they, they don't have kids in the school district anymore and they are asking, okay, so why am I still paying this much? Where is it going? Why do I have to pay this much if I don't have children in the school district anymore? You know, what am I getting? There are people leaving Bronxville now, which is sad because it's an absolute beautiful community. Just like Yonkers, this is a beautiful community. And uh, the sales tax, because a lot of them are small business owners, they've been affected. 
Um, they're starting to worry about safety issues, crime. They, you know, literally, like, we're 15 minutes away from the Bronx. We see what's going on every day now and down in New York City. They're afraid of it coming over there. They are. They're, they're not that type of community to ever really deal with anything like that, and they don't want that issue. Now, as you know, we are live, and uh, Hector Santiago just commented and said, wait, James is running as a Republican? You want to clarify this? Yes, I am running as a Republican and a conservative. Both? Yes, I okay. have both on. Both, okay. Now, James, that is something huge going on in the United States mm -hmm. that affects every single one, directly or indirectly. And all of us know somebody who has been affected by COVID-19, yes. okay? And the variants. What is your stance on the COVID-19? Look, I'm all for respecting each person's opinion, mm -hmm. but when your opinion or your decision might affect mine, yes. then it's a whole different ball game. But look, I am not running. You are running. Yeah. So people need to know where do you stand on that? Well, COVID-19 is a very, very serious uh, virus and it should be taken serious. It's very dangerous. This is something that, you know, unfortunately we all know somebody that has been lost to it or, you know, unfortunately it has still complications to this day. So we should still take precaution, but we should still begin to open up again. We can no longer be shut down. If we're going to begin to open up more, and bring, come back to a new world, because you can't go back to the old world, come back to a new world, new beginning. We should take every precaution that we have to while we're doing that. We can only keep things shut down, but we, sh we have to operate on a different level now and take precautions. You know, I, I agree 100% with you, and I must make it clear that no one, regardless if you are on the left, the right, the center, no one wants the economy shut, no. because we need a job. We this needs to move. No one wants it shut down. No, no one wants to go back into the what was last year this no, time around. Absolutely not. But we need to be you know, cautious about it. We do. It. We have to. I mean, we, we have every reason to because, uh, like I said, you know, the people that are getting sick or sick now or constantly feeling the effects afterwards because uh, the after effects are where it really hurts some people or the deaths. You know, we can't forget about that, but we need to begin to operate and come into a new beginning of, uh, you know, what a new world, and we have to do everything necessary to protect us to make sure that this doesn't become years down the line that we're constantly battling. So we have to take necessary precautions. Well, you know, James, we have to come to a conclusion of today's uh, interview, but uh, I don't know if you have a final statement, something that maybe I forgot to ask mm -hmm. you, but you want to talk about the things that you might think the people need to know. Take the last two or three minutes or whatever time necessary to do the closing. Okay. Well, it's never been about the party. It's never been about the policy. It's about serving the people. That's what I've been about. That's what I've worked for my entire life, and I'm going to continue to do so, if not hard, even harder than I have been before. This is something that I feel is a passion for mine. I am about public servant. That's what it's about, public servant serving the people. Even when I am elected, I'm going to continue to knock on your doors to find out what scares the people, what, what concerns you have. This is about you. The voters are the boss. If you have a concern, I, I can't promise to fix everything, but I will promise to answer. I will promise to work hard. I will promise to find a solution the best way possible. I will promise you that I will work night and day for my community, Yonkers, Bronxville, all the District 15, Westchester, and you know New York, because we need to start to serve the people once again. We can no longer serve the parties. And this is what this is what it has become. A lot of elected officials and candidates forget that. They forget that. They, they think it's just glorious to run as an elected official and have the title. Work has to be put in. And as long as you're serving the people, I want to make sure that I can go to bed every single night and I say I did my best and I'm going to continue to do my best. And I want to serve every single day when I am elected Westchester County Legislature for District 15, November 2nd. So you pledge that once elected, if elected, you will still be reachable. People yeah. will be able to reach you because, you know, that's one of the problems that we have. 
you know, before the elections, we can reach any elected yeah. official or people seeking to be elected. But once they are elected, it becomes a little bit more difficult. No, you pledge that you will continue to be the same yeah. James Nolan. Listen, the James Nolan you saw yesterday doing pull-ups in the park. That's I, right. You did I, how many? I did 10. 10, guys. Ten. He did 10 pull-ups. I did half right. of one. And I, I'm still going to be that James Nolan. I'm just going to have a much louder voice at that point where I can help, you know, get people's, you know, thoughts out. They want their solution. I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be that public servant that's in politics, but I'm serving the people. You know, You're guys, I think it's, it's extremely important that people put people, people seeking elected position, put people above politics. This is not about your party, left or right or center. This is about the American people. American people. This is about serving the people that elected you, regardless of who they are. Once you are elected, you represent the people. Yep. They're the boss. They're the boss. So, James, I wish you the best. Thank you. We should do this again soon. Sounds okay? great. Anytime that you have something of importance to, to, tell, you know, to tell, contact us. And at the same time, I want to let you, all of you know that Yonkers Voice does not endorse or oppose any candidate. We are here for you. We endorse you, the people. We invite our guests so they can come and talk about what they have to offer, the platform that they're running on, so you know, so you can make that decision. We don't endorse or oppose, and all of you are welcome in our platform to speak with the people of our city or, or our county. So thank you. Until next time. And James, thank, thank you. you once again. Thank you. That's it. Right. Hector knows what I'm running for, on what I'm running on. Hector is just uh, being Hector. Yeah. I was looking for some said Lusitania. Oh. <laughs> I, I walked in this whole place. I looked for one thing said Lusitania. So this is the best he, I can do. He, he knows what I'm running on. He knows. He knows. Yeah, just like he, you know, back before I ran, said, yeah, you know, when you run, I'm going to help you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and then he comes out and says, oh, I didn't know you were running against Ruth. You know, she's only been in there two years. That's not, you know, very long to actually do anything. For two years? And look at how much more I've done. Yeah. Especially during COVID. Yeah. I've actually had laws passed during COVID. Mm -hmm. So, He was, uh, when she ran, he was working, trying to get in close to her, too. So they, they uh, not that she ever did anything for him, but he just thinks, yeah. It's just like...